America's best known evangelist and son of Billy Graham, Reverend Franklin Graham, joins me now. Uh, Franklin, great to see you. It's good to be with you, Piers. I, I want to play a clip from Donald Trump's victory speech last night because it's relevant, I think, t to you. And he talked about uh, God saving him. Let's take a listen. Right after Donald Trump's election victory, Franklin Graham sat down with Piers Morgan and made some bold, unexpected statements. Graham didn't just congratulate Trump, he suggested that God intervene to protect him, saying Trump's survival wasn't luck, but divine purpose. He even called out the media, claiming they've tried to tear Trump down. Graham sees this win as a turning point for religious freedom and protection for the unborn, and his words are making waves. Let's unpack exactly what he said and why it's sparking so much conversation. And I said that many people have told me that God spared my life for a reason. And that reason was to save our country and to restore America to greatness. And now we are going to fulfill that mission together. We're going to fulfill that mission. Frank, what did you make of what Trump said there? Well, no question, Piers. Uh, when he was there in Pennsylvania and that bullet uh, went uh, through his ear, just missing his brain by a millimeter or so, uh, I believe God turned his head uh, at, that, at that precise moment that saved his life. And so uh, there's no other way to explain it. And then to have another uh, assessment for him on the golf course, and they were able to, mm. to spoil that. Uh, I believe it's God, no question. I think God has uh, saved him and brought him to this position. No, no American has, uh, a politician has been attacked the way he's been attacked. And I'm not talking about with the uh, assassins, but I'm talking about the media. Trump's been unfairly targeted, and that it's beyond what most politicians deal with. Now, whether or not you agree with Trump's politics, it does raise some big questions about justice and integrity, especially for us as Christians. I think God calls us to be wise and discerning about what we watch and read. You talk about, uh, uh, you talk about uh, election interference. Uh, it's not the Russians. It's ABC, NBC, CBS. Uh, it's New York Times. Uh, they've all colluded together to try to destroy this man and your, your, one of your other guests were talking about uh, all the lies that he tells. I disagree, Paris. I, I don't believe Donald Trump wakes up in the morning and says, I wonder how many lies I can tell to the American people today. He doesn't do that. He's not that kind of person. He would have never uh, got to the position in the business world if he was just going out telling all these lies. You have to have some honor. You have to have integrity in the business world if you're going to survive. And I, I believe what happens is you hear things or you read things and sometimes you take them out of context. Sometimes your staff gives you uh, not all the information. And so you, you repeat it and then it sounds like you've lied or whatever. And, it's, and I just don't think that's the case with Donald Trump. Does he embellish? Of course he does. Like you said, he's a salesman. He's a New York realtor. But I don't think he wakes up in the morning to say how many lies I can tell. And I think God has protected him and saved him for a very special job. And that is to turn this nation, uh, I think, turn it around and also turn it back to God. When, when he won last night, uh, that was a win for it win for freedom, freedom of speech uh, for the American farmer, for the oil and gas industry. It's a it's a win for the coal industry. It's a it's a win for common sense. Uh, it's so many people, uh, the unborn. I think about the millions of children that are going to be saved uh, in the coming years because of Donald Trump uh, in his position. Now he's not a, for a ban on a. And he never has been, but he feels that decision should be made up by the states. And he's put it back in the hands of the state legislators to make those decisions. But there'll be millions of children who will survive because of Donald Trump. So I'm, I'm thankful. And I believe God put him there, Piers, and I'm, I couldn't be any more thrilled. This part really stood out to me. Franklin Graham is saying that Trump's support from evangelicals isn't just from one racial group. It's from believers of all backgrounds. And isn't that what the body of Christ is all about? Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. <laughs> well, you know, he got 80% of the white evangelical Christian vote in the end, which was higher than many people feared may be the case. What in the end do you think drove the, the white evangelicals out to vote for him? 
this appears it's not white evangelicals. Uh, it's black evangelicals, Latino evangelicals, uh, the people that believe in God and worship God and, and, and read and study the scriptures and believe the Bible to be the word of God. And it's, it's, it transcends whiteness. I mean, there's people of all races. And it's just, this is the group of people that stood behind him. And I just, uh, and I thank God for that. But uh, Trump resonated with them and he, he defends them. And religious freedom is a big issue. And when you look at the left and they're trying to take the, the freedoms that we enjoy, uh, you know, Trump defends us. Like Christmas of 2016, you know, he, uh -huh. you know, he brought back saying Merry Christmas. And we yeah. think that's a little thing, but it's not a little thing. It's a, it's a, it's a big thing. It's the tip of an iceberg. Jesus Christ. In America, we don't worship government. We worship God. Because the Lord told me, he said, I am not done with America. I have great relationship with God. I have great relationship with uh, the evangelicals. And I go to church a lot. Always on Christmas, always on Easter, uh, always when there's a major occasion. And during the, during the Sundays, I'm a Sunday church person. My second favorite book of all time. What's my first favorite book? The Bible. The Bible is special. The Bible, the more you see it, the more you read it, the more incredible it is. Are you an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. Proverbs, the chapter, never bend to envy. I've had that thing all of my life where you're, people are bending to envy. Two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians, 317. That's the whole ball game. There's no way I would ever do anything to do negative to a Bible. God is the ultimate. I mean, God created this. Yeah. And, you know, here's the Pacific Ocean right behind us. So, uh, nobody, no thing, no, there's nothing like yes. us. No mass, everything, you can do all you want, but you know, you still need help from the boss. We need help from the boss. That's what happened. We need help. Yeah, we need help. It's all right. But here's something we have to remember. While we can respect and acknowledge our leaders, no human leader, no matter how powerful or influential, can ever take the place of Jesus Christ in our lives. Psalm 146, 3 reminds us, do not put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. Jesus alone is our savior, the one who truly transforms us and who will never fail us. We know that in these times, as the world becomes more unpredictable and we face challenges, it's so important to remember that our trust belongs solely to Christ. So while we pray for our leaders, let's keep our hearts firmly set on Jesus, putting all our faith and hope in him, not in any earthly leader. Our hope, our strength, and our future, it's all in Jesus alone.